The most critical region in the Russia-Ukraine war is without a doubt Crimea. While the Russian army is struggling not to lose Crimea, which it occupied in 2014, the Ukrainian army is fighting to reclaim its territory from the occupiers. When Russian leader Vladimir Putin failed to succeed in his plan to invade Ukraine, which he launched last year, he found himself in a position to lose Crimea because the successful attacks of the Ukrainian army have reached as far as Crimea. Putin wants to dominate the seas by maintaining his presence in Crimea, so much so that the Black Sea fleet of the Russian occupiers is located on the Crimean Peninsula. In addition, the ports in this region play an important role in international trade. But Putin is getting closer to losing his presence in Crimea because the Ukrainian army's attacks on Crimea are increasing day by day. Since the beginning of the war, Ukrainian leader Zelensky has repeatedly stated that Crimea will be liberated from the occupiers. The developments in Crimea demonstrate Zelensky's determination and the success of the Ukrainian army. The pulse of the Russian-Ukrainian war continues to beat in Crimea. The Ukrainian Air Force is constantly monitoring the targets of the occupiers in Crimea. The areas detected by reconnaissance drones are hit by unmanned aerial vehicles and missiles. The air base of the occupiers in Crimea was shaken by the attack of Ukrainian drones the other day. Moreover, the air base housed a Su-24 attack aircraft, which are of great importance for the Russian army. Before we reveal the details about the attack on the air base of the Russian occupiers in Crimea, we have a request for you as an ALA. News team, we continue to report all the developments in the Russia-Ukraine war with our understanding of accurate and impartial reporting. You can click on the super thanks button to support our teammates who work hard in the preparation of these reports and contribute to the continuation of the reports without interruption. The base of the Russian invaders was hit by Ukrainian drones. The attack was carried out in the morning. The Ukrainian Air Force detected the invaders' air base with reconnaissance drones flown before the attack. The coordinates of the area were recorded. The next step was to carry out the attack. Ukrainian drones were flown to strike the air base in Crimea. Upon reaching the area, the drones successfully hit the targeted points. The images shared after the attack show the intensity of the explosions. In the images shared on social media after the air base of the Russian invaders was hit, huge clouds of smoke were seen in the city of Gorodetskoy in the Simferopol rayon. Residents of the area, located kilometers away from the air base, said that the windows of their houses were shaking. The sound of the explosions was heard in many parts of Crimea. One of the most important reasons for the intensity of the explosions at the airbase was the Su-24 attack aircrafts that the Russian occupiers had stationed at the airbase. Builds during the Soviet Union to offer an attack aircraft plays a major role in the Russian Air Force's air strikes against Ukraine. The Russian army, which was about to lose its ammunition stock as a result of the Ukrainian army's attacks, suffered another major loss with the latest attack. No information on the number of aircraft at the airbase in Crimea has been shared, but the intensity of the explosions indicates that the number of aircraft is high. Ukrainian authorities have not yet made a statement about the attack on the Russian airbase. The statement made by Russia concealed the facts. Russian authorities have been making false statements to hide the losses they have suffered since the war began because they don't want to accept their losses against Ukraine. This was also the case with the attack on the military base. Sergei Aksyonov, the Russian occupation official in charge of Crimea, made statements about the attack on the air base in Gvardyskoy that concealed the facts. Aksyonov said that a Ukrainian drone was shot down in the airbase area. According to Aksyonov, the drone crashed in a field and there was no damage or loss of life. However, statements by locals close to the area and footage shared on social media revealed that Aksyonov's statements were not true. While the Ukrainian army was targeting the occupiers in Crimea, there was a new development in Russia, a natural gas pipeline in the city of Pelham in Russia's Sverdlovsk Oblast exploded. 
A big fire broke out after the explosion. One of Russia's most important natural gas companies made a statement about the explosion. According to the statement, the explosion and the natural gas pipeline occurred at 6.37 p.m. Many posts containing images of the explosion were shared on social media. The severity of the fire is clearly visible in the images. The fact that the fire broke out in a natural gas pipeline increases this intensity even more. In the video, shared flames rising tens of meters upwards draw attention. No statement has been made about the explosion in the city of Pelham. But as always, these explosions brought to mind Ukrainian partisan groups because partisan groups have organized many attacks on Russian territory by crossing the occupied territories. The aim of these attacks was not to harm the civilian population like the Russian occupiers. The partisans attacked military bases, airports gathering and administrative centers belonging to the occupying Russian army and many points that would cause economic damage to Russia. The Russian army has been powerless against the Ukrainian army, which has been strengthened with the support of Western and European countries. One of the biggest reasons for the loss of power of the Russian army is the problems within the army and the Russian soldiers who do not want to fight. The Russian army includes many different groups within its structure. The most well-known of these are the Wagner Group soldiers and the soldiers loyal to Chechen leader Katerov. The conflict between Russian army soldiers, Wagner Group soldiers and Chechen soldiers loyal to Katerov is constantly increasing. The Wagner Group started to disagree with the Russian army, especially after its operations in Bakhmut. Because the Wagner Group had held victory celebrations in this region without the knowledge of the Russian army, and the clashes in the region were also continuing. Making victory declarations independently of the official army was the end of Prigozhin, so much so that the leader of the Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, is having serious problems with the Russian chief of the general staff, Valery Gerasimov, and the Russian defense minister, Sergei Shoigu. Wagner Group soldiers do not listen to the orders of Russian army commanders, while Katerov's Chechen soldiers are constantly humiliated for their race and beliefs. Russian leader Vladimir Putin, unable to solve the problems in the army, is also facing a troop problem. The number of soldiers in the Russian army is decreasing day by day. Every day, around 1,000 Russian soldiers die as a result of the attacks by the Ukrainian army. That being said, about 10,000 Russian soldiers have surrendered to the Ukrainian army since the beginning of the war. Russian youths do not want to die for Putin's own political career. The Russian people continue their protests for an end to the war. It seems to be very difficult for Putin, who is cornered every day in the face of all these problems to continue the war for a long time. Ukrainian army moved towards Russian territory. The Ukrainian army, which launched an offensive against the city of Kharkov on the border of Ukraine with Russia, managed to push back the Russian forces and the occupied city of Kharkov. Russian soldiers who had to surrender by raising the white flag were very disappointed. The balance of the war between Russia and Ukraine has completely changed. After the operation organized by the pro-Ukrainian Russian Freedom Legion soldiers inside the Russian borders in the past days, for the first time, the Ukrainian army captured towns within Russia's borders, putting a big stamp on the war. While the Kremlin has not yet recovered from the shock of this event, two more towns and the city of Kharkov, which were under Russian occupation, were liberated from occupation. Thanks to the success of operations organized by the Ukrainian army in the city of Kharkov, then Ukrainian soldiers blockaded the town where the Russian forces were located. The Russian soldiers in the town had to surrender by waving a white flag from the roof of the building where they were stationed. As it is known, three towns of the Russian city of Belgorod have been captured by pro-Ukrainian soldiers. Vladimir Putin, who wants to regain control in the region, started to increase the security measures of the city of Belgorod by withdrawing a large number of Russian soldiers in the city of Kharkov. According to the information obtained from regional sources, more than 4,000 Russian troops have started to be transferred from Kharkov to Belgorod. 
Following this information provided to the Ukrainian intelligence service, the Ukrainian army took action to organize a major operation against the city of Kharkov. Ukrainian leader Zelensky, who started to accumulate troops in the city of Dnipro, planned to form a large battalion from here and move towards the borders of Kharkov with this battalion. A large battalion consisting of nearly 6,300 soldiers was formed in Dnipro, with Ukrainian troops coming from many regions led by seven different commanders. The battalion started preparing for an operation to seize the border towns of Kharkiv city. However, the most striking event in the operation was the German-made Leopard 2 tanks used by the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian army had carried out many successful operations with these tanks and by Germany and the USA. The Ukrainian army, which managed to advance to the town of Merefa in Kharkov, carried out a reconnaissance to identify the area where Russian soldiers were stationed in the town. Ukrainian soldiers who started to control the town with unmanned aerial vehicles detected the buildings where Russian soldiers were hiding. It was determined that the Russian soldiers stationed in a small hospital at the entrance of the town had turned this hospital into a headquarters. The Ukrainian army blocked the entrance to the town to prevent Russian soldiers from leaving the town. Ukrainian soldiers who started firing tank shots with Leopard tanks towards the hospital where Russian forces were located shelled the town. The Ukrainian army, which gave Russian soldiers a hard time with tank shots for minutes, managed to take the Russian soldiers out of the hospital. Ukrainian soldiers waiting in readiness entered the town quickly and continued to clash with Russian soldiers. While the majority of the soldiers in the town got into their armored vehicles and left the area, some of them were still stationed in abandoned buildings and continued clashes. Unable to resist the Ukrainian army's offensive any longer, the majority of Russian soldiers decided to surrender. However, the most interesting event was the Russian soldiers waving a white flag from the roof of the hospital. They had turned into their headquarters. When the Russian soldiers hiding inside the hospital saw that their friends had surrendered, they went up to the roof of the hospital, tied a white bedspread to the barrel of the gun, and started waving it. Seeing a white flag flying from the roof of the hospital, the Ukrainian army quickly entered the courtyard of the hospital and encircled the hospital. Ukrainian soldiers quickly entered the hospital and minutes later came out with 47 Russian soldiers. Russian soldiers arrested by Ukrainian soldiers were kept waiting in the hospital parking lot. According to the information obtained from the Telegram channel, it was stated that the Russian forces in the town withdrew completely and a total of to 73 Russian soldiers had to surrender. It was also learned that 45 Russian soldiers were neutralized during the ongoing clashes. Ukrainian troop commander, in a statement on the Telegram channel, stated that the city of Merev in Kharkiv was completely under the control of the Ukrainian army and did not neglect to share a photo of the Ukrainian flag waving on the Telegram channel. Kharkiv, one of the regions occupied by the Russian army in the first months of the war, is a very important city for Vladimir Putin. This region, which is the border city of Ukraine to Russia, is of great importance for Vladimir Putin. As it is known, the vast majority of weapons and ammunition sent from within Russia's borders are first sent to the city of Kharkov. From Kharkov, this military equipment was distributed to Russian troops in Ukraine. In short, Vladimir Putin was using this region as the coordination center of the Russian army. Vladimir Putin first lost three towns in the city of Belgorod, and now he has lost Marathon, one of the most important regions in the city of Kharkov, which he held for months. Thanks to the successful operation of the Ukrainian army, a region in the city of Kharkov, which had been under occupation for months, was liberated from Russian occupation for the first time. According to the information obtained from regional sources, Ukrainian citizens living in the surrounding towns of the liberated region have started to return to the town of Merefa. Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky stated that they have started to deliver food and medicine for the people living in this region. The commanders of the Ukrainian troops organizing the operations stated on social media that they will continue to 
to fight for the full independence and freedom of Ukraine until the end, and that the city of Kharkiv will soon be completely liberated from Russian occupation. One of Putin's biggest fears is that if Kharkov is completely under the control of the Ukrainian army, Russia will cooperate with Ukrainian soldiers stationed in Belgorod. These three towns in Russia are still under the control of the Ukrainian army. And if the city of Kharkov is fully captured, the Ukrainian army's border gates to Belgorod will be fully opened. Russian territory would then become a completely open target. Putin, who does not want this to happen, was already started working to increase security measures in Belgorod. Acting on Putin's orders, Russian Army General Valery Gerasimov has already sent two Panzer air defense systems to Belgorod. At the same time, Russian soldiers who were included in the army with the decision of partial mobilization started to be transferred to Belgorod. As it is known, some of the soldiers included in Putin's partial mobilization were still being kept in readiness. Putin was hesitant to send these soldiers to Ukraine because the Russian army suffered too many casualties in Ukraine because the majority of the soldiers who lost their lives on Ukrainian soil were recruits sent with a mobilization decision. However, since the situation was so critical and Russia's borders were under threat, Putin had no choice but to send these soldiers. Nearly 10,000 Russian soldiers have started to be transferred to the Russian headquarters in Belgorod by Putin's order. At the same time, interestingly, the Russian National Guard soldiers serving within the borders of Russia were also called to duty. For the first time, the National Guard, which is not normally involved in the war, was given a mission and sent to Belgorod territory. As we can understand from this, Putin has a really big true problem and the situation is quite critical. Putin's biggest fear in doing this is that he is afraid of the reaction of the Russian people. Since the beginning of the war, the number of Russian citizens who do not support the occupation in Ukraine has increased considerably. As a result of the airstrikes inside Russia's borders, the people have started to think that Putin is unable to ensure Russia's security, and they are very angry with Putin. Now, the Ukrainian army's entry into Russia's borders by organizing a new operation would greatly shake Putin's authority. For this reason, Putin seems to be playing all the trump cards in his hands. While the relentless war between Russian and Ukrainian forces on the Eastern Front continues, the Ukrainian forces are trying to make moves to change the course of the war. The high performance of the Ukrainian forces was a great source of morale and enabled the Ukrainian forces to make more forward-looking moves. Ukrainian forces carried out intense attacks on Russian support points throughout the war. The location of these support points could not prevent the Ukrainian forces. An attack carried out the other day also showed us how determined the Ukrainian forces are to take advantage and what kind of Russian military elements they are targeting. Let's take a closer look at these very strategic attacks by the Ukrainian forces and the war strategy of the Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces accelerated their attacks on Russian military elements and facilities supporting the Russian occupation of Ukraine on the territory of the Russian Federation. Russian forces have an undeniable advantage over Ukrainian forces. However, the Ukrainian forces carry out very strategic attacks so that the Russians cannot use this advantage in an attack that took place the other day. Ukrainian forces inflicted great damage on the air power of the Russian forces. An explosion occurred near the airport in the Russian city of Yeysk. Yeysk Air Base is 460 kilometers away from the Ukrainian southern fronts. There was also an explosion and a fire at a Russian flight school base in the Krasnodar region. Subsequently, an explosion and fire were reported at the oil depot in the Krasnodar to support 580 kilometers from the front. After a very violent explosion at the Yeysk Air Base, a major fire was reported at the training ground. Although the news about the explosion and fire was denied by the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations, it was seen in the images that the fire continued for a long time and many emergency teams were sent to the region. 
At the airport in the city of Yeysk, there were Su-30 for fighter bombers, the most important weapon of the Russian Air Force. However, the fate of these six aircraft is currently unknown. It is very likely that six Su-30 for fighter bombers were badly damaged and rendered unusable by explosion and fire. For the time being, we can qualify these planes as missing. Yaysk residents shared on social media platforms the evidence of explosions and fires in the ASEC region. Although the explosions were proven by satellite images and civilians in the area, Yaysk Regional Governor Roman Bublik claimed that the fire broke out on a training ground where military exercises were held. Except for Governor Roman Bublik's statement, no official statement has been made yet. However, looking at the photographs, it is obvious that the military fire did not occur as a result of the military exercise. Although the Kremlin government and the Russian army refrained from making a statement on this issue, we can say with peace of mind that the explosion and fire were caused by the unmanned aerial vehicles of the Ukrainian forces. When we look at the geographical location of Yeysk, the Ukrainian forces have the capacity to carry out this attack. The Yeysk region gives Russian forces a significant advantage in the Azov Sea and occupied Mariupol. Yeysk is located 70 kilometers across the Sea of Azov from Mariupol, which is occupied by Russian forces. Yeysk Military Airport is only 200 kilometers from the Bakhmut district, where fierce fighting took place, and the airport has the power to support the invasion operations in Bakhmut, which has become the main focus of the Russian forces. Besides, Yeysk is located only 460 kilometers from the southern front line, which is one of the main focuses of the Ukrainian forces. This makes Yeysk an important target for Ukrainian forces. The region may seem distant when you look at the numbers, however, Ukrainian forces have also carried out drone strikes to more distant points in recent days. A series of incidents and explosions occurred in various parts of Russia that appeared to be related to drone threats. On the same day, many explosions occurred in the depths of Russia due to an unmanned aerial vehicle attack. These attacks are thought to have taken place from surprisingly remote location. Let's take a closer look at the attacks on the military installations deep in Russia, which have become recurring targets for Ukrainian drone attacks. Krasnodar is one of the regions most exposed to drone attacks by Ukrainian forces. Krasnodar is of strategic importance for the Russian invasion plan. At the same time, its proximity to the Crimean and Eastern Ukraine fronts and being an important support point for Russian forces made Krasnodar a key target for Ukrainian forces. Very close to the explosion in Yeysk, an explosion and fire broke out at a flight school base located near the city of Krasnodar. As always, the Kremlin government and military declined to comment on the explosion. Russian authorities have yet to confirm whether there were any casualties or equipment damage. As a result of our research, we found that the flight school that was exposed to the explosion was in the city of Adygea, south of Krasnodar. The flight school is almost twice as far as Yeysk Airport. From the points just mentioned, it is located approximately 460 kilometers from the Bakhmut region and 630 kilometers from the Khorasan region. Another attack, which was carried out at the same time as the Adagea flight school was carried out at a distance from other attacks. An explosion and fire broke out at an oil depot in the Krasnodar territory. The biggest feature in targeting this oil depot is that it both supported the Russian forces in the Ukraine invasion plan and was linked to one of Russian President Vladimir Putin's close friends, Igor Sekin. Igor Sekin is also the former deputy prime minister of Russia. Returning to the details of the incident, the infrastructure of the oil depot belonging to the Rosneft company was damaged as a result of the drone attack. The exact number of drones that took part in the attack on the oil depot was not disclosed. But judging by the photos of the locals, the attack had extremely serious consequences for the oil storage base. Based on photos taken by local residents, it was determined that the fire that started after the explosion was quite strong. 
Its consequences could not be eliminated for quite some time and fire and a huge pillar of smoke could be observed from a distance of several kilometers. Emergency crews who came to the area had difficulty in getting the fire under control. Extinguishing works continued for a long time. The point of the attack is quite far from Bakhmut and Kherson. The fact that the Ukrainian forces are launching drone strikes at such great distances indicates that the Ukrainians are willing to end the war very quickly. The Russian Ministry of Defense made a single statement about all these explosions. The Ministry of Defense noted that the Kiev regime is trying to use UAVs to attack civilian infrastructure targets in the Krasnodar region and the Republic of Adygea by trying to portray targets used as military facilities as civilian facilities. The Russian Defense Ministry wants to distort the event as Ukrainian forces committed war crimes. However, when the targets are examined, it is seen that there are points used as military facilities. Well, what kind of advantage will these attacks give the Ukrainian forces? As we all know, Ukrainian forces are preparing for a multi-pronged counter-attack in this process. Ukraine has two goals. The first of these targets is the Crimean Peninsula. The Crimean Peninsula is the point that will ignite the collapse of the Russian Federation. With the return of Crimea to Ukrainian control, the credibility of the Kremlin government will be shaken and it will be difficult to focus on occupation operations in eastern Ukraine. For this reason, Ukrainian forces have given priority to Crimea. After the Crimea is taken, Donetsk and Luhansk regions will be cleared without losing speed. While the Ukrainian forces are advancing towards this goal, they must also eliminate the advantage Mariupol has given to the Russian forces. Mariupol was largely devastated early in the war, but it's still important to Russia because it's the largest city Russia captured and currently controls in 2022 and is also on a crucial supply route. Ukrainian forces continue their attacks in this direction before launching drone strikes in and around Krasnodar. Ukrainian forces attack several strategic points in Mariupol. Among the targets exposed to the attacks of the Ukrainian forces are a steel factory used by Russia as a military base, two fuel depots and an arsenal in an airport. Ukrainian forces are advancing very systematically to the great victory.